couple introductions. So um, yes, this is day two of our uh, of our workshop, and this is where we uh, uh, we actually get to hear what's what's currently being done. Uh, so this is the exciting day, uh, and our first speaker today is going to be uh, Matthew Qualheim from uh, and uh, UPenn, and he's going to talk about computing the Conley index for hybrid systems. Let me share my screen. Can you all see this? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, shall I get started? Please do. Okay, um, so I've changed the title of my talk to more accurately um, reflect its, com its contents. So um, uh, my talk is about, um, well, uh, generalizing Conley theory to hybrid systems. Uh, but before I go there, um, I'd like to um, just take a step back and motivate hybrid systems. And before I do that, I just want to um, motivate uh, dynamical systems in general um, uh, for controlling things like robots. Um, so um, uh, in uh, Dan Kodachek's group, uh, something that people like to talk about are deliberative plans and reactive plans. So um, a deliberative plan is one in which you deliberate and it often uh, involves a lot of uh, time for the robot to think, uh, to decide what to do next. Um, on the other hand, a reactive uh, plan is um, purely based in feedback, and it's one in which the next action of the robot is completely determined by its current state. Um, I would argue that both of these are important, but um, reactive planning is a especially useful for um, low level control and it allows for very quick responses. Um, and if we can push the state of uh, what we can do through reactive control, um, this, um, this in turn can um, enable the development of increasingly effective deliberative planners because um, the deliberative planner has to accomplish fewer things. Um, so formally, um, uh, if you weren't all already thinking this, uh, what I mean by a reactive plan is just one for which the closed loop system is expressible as either a dynamical system or a semi-dynamical system. Um, now, um, uh, as I'll show some pictures on the next slide, uh, physical or engineered events often cause abrupt changes um, in the governing dynamics, um, discontinuities if you like. And so it makes the uh, most useful models of such system hybrid. Uh, and I'll say more about what I mean, what a hybrid system is precisely. Um, so for example, making breaking of mechanical contacts, um, if, a, if a legged robot is running, um, this could be the robot's uh, feet planting and lifting off of the ground, or it could be a robot um, uh, with a mechanical arm that needs to uh, grasp objects, lift them up and put them down um, or manipulate them in some other ways, or it could be, um, uh, you could have systems that aren't of that type, um, but just at the level of control, at the level of planning, you, uh, for whatever reason, and I'll say some reasons why, you'll, uh, you just want to switch your continuous control law based on um, high level logical decisions. Um, so these are some uh, things you might be familiar with. Um, so you can have a hybrid system uh, uh, arising from, for example, on the left here is a popular model of a uh, bipedal walking robot. Um, models like these seem to be very useful uh, for modeling legged robots where you, you sort of try, don't try very hard to model all of the details of the, um, uh, of the robot ground interactions and you just model a uh, contact with the ground is inducing a discontinuous change in the velocities of the system. On the other hand, you might have systems where um, there's no inherent hybridness um, uh, in, let's say, the most useful models. You don't have things like contacts, but the configuration space or state space might be sufficiently complicated that the best way you can figure out to go from point A to point B is just to um, design little incremental uh, continuous control laws that get you from here to here to here and so on all the way there. Um, 
Now, I'd like to talk about um, one other reason uh, to care about hybrid systems, which um, you might not have thought of or heard of and was surprising to me. Um, so an unexpected source of uh, the need for hybrid systems is the following. So uh, consider the following toy problem. Uh, here is a little differential drive robot. It can drive forwards or backwards and it can rotate, but it can't go sideways. Its wheels do not um, slip uh, perpendicular to their dire uh, forward direction. Um, now you can choose a couple of ways to model this thing. Um, you can, like a lot of people do, you can assume that you directly control the velocity as, as in two there, or if you want to be more accurate, you can model this, you know, as a full, uh, blown mechanical system and, and include inertias and, um, um, that's fine. Um, okay. So let's suppose we have the following goal. We want this little robot to it's it's got a camera on the middle of it and we want it to be pointing it towards the origin um let's suppose the camera has got kind of a wide view um anywhere kind of pointing near the the origin is fine something very interesting is happening there but we don't want the robot to be pointing in the complete opposite direction um and um so right now it is pointing in the complete opposite direction i would prefer if this arrow were going uh towards the origin um, and so just for simplicity, let's just say that um, as long as this arrow is uh, sort of uh, not more than 90 degrees away from the arrow going towards the origin, um, that's good. Uh, meanwhile, there are a bunch of dangerous obstacles. I colored them this color because I'm imagining they're filled with lava or something similar. Uh, and I really don't want the robot to get anywhere near these. Um, getting near them would be bad. And uh, so what I would like to do is I'd like to make the complement of this bad set. The bad set B consists of uh, not only uh, state spaces X, Y, theta, and possibly X dot, Y dot, and theta dot. And so the bad set consists of all, the, all of those states where X and Y are in the lava pits or when theta is kind of the robots pointing away from the origin. Um, uh, so what I would like is the complement of this bad set. I would like to render it um, using a reactive control law, which means it depends only on state. I would like to make the complement of the bad set uh, safe in the following strict sense. If you're in initial condition starting in the closure of this desired safe set, um, then your, um, uh, the tra your forward trajectory is unique. and um, for all positive times, you've got to immediately flow into the complement of the bad set. Um, I think this is a, to me, this <coughs> seems like a pretty um, reasonable task uh, um, for this differential drive robot. And it was surprising to me to find out that um, this is actually impossible. Um, in fact, all that really matters here, the specific shapes uh, don't really matter the obstacles. All that matters is that they're all topological disks. And all that matters is that there's at least one of these uh, lava pits. And um, uh, I should have said also, we need to stay inside this big disk. Um, and uh, if you require those things and you require uh, that this control law is, depends continuously on the initial conditions, uh, you can't do this. And so if you insist on accomplishing this goal reactively uh, using feedback that doesn't depend directly on time or explicitly on time, uh, then you have to use discontinuous feedback. Topology forces you to. Um, and if you use discontinuous feedback, then you can, and it's often profitable to do this, view the resulting closed loop system as a hybrid dynamical system and then you can bring to bear the tools and techniques from hybrid dynamical systems theory to think about the system, which at the outset uh, appeared not to have anything hybrid in sight in its um, definition. Um, so what I'll, with, with that as motivation, I'll change gears completely and talk about what we've been doing to develop um, uh, a unified dynamical systems theory for um, hybrid systems. And there's a lot of work to do left, and I'll say more about that at the end. And specifically, I'll talk on developing a branch of 
uh, topological dynamics that all of you, uh, most of you know, uh, and have been talking about Conley theory. Uh, so <clears throat> the first thing I'll talk about is um, uh, sort of in the realm of chapters, chapter two of Conley's book, which is generalizing Conley's decomposition theorem and fundamental theorem of dynamical systems. Um, so what I've shown here is sort of a, a amalgamation of, um, or combination of uh, uh, various theorems in the literature. Um, Conley proved this, these theorems for flows and then people extended them to um, uh, discrete time uh, dynamical systems. Uh, and then people extend them to semi-dynamical systems where you might only have a semi-flow or a non-invertible map. Uh, I, and I'm mentioning the work of Conley, Franks, and Hurley here as standing out to me. Um, so let phi be a continuous semi-dynamical system. Could be um, the flow of some ODE. It could be a discrete time system uh, generated by iterating some continuous map. Um, uh, could be a semi-flow. Um, and for simplicity, suppose we're on a compact metric space. We can measure distances between points then the chain recurrent set admits um, this thing I'm calling a Conley decomposition, uh, which means that you can, uh, the chain recurrent set is, the, is precisely the intersection over all uh, attracting sets or asymptotically stable sets um, uh, with the complement of the basin of attraction of those sets. Um, and so what this means is if you are chain recurrent, uh, or sorry, you're not chain recurrent, uh, if and only if you're in the basin of some asymptotically stable set, but not in the asymptotically stable set itself. Um, um, and it, it, you can add some more details to this. And then an, the other fact, which um, uh, Norton argued should be called the fundamental theorem of dynamical systems. Maybe you want to combine these two theorems into one, maybe you don't. Um, every continuous semi-dynamical system on a compact metric space admits what's called a completely op and off function. And it strictly decreases on trajectories outside the chain recurrent set, but within the chain recurrent set, it's constant. And there are some other properties that I'll say more about. Here's a picture. So for this dynamical system, uh, we're just in the plane. It's uh, a flow generated by an ODE. Um, there's an unstable uh, equilibrium here. A nearby trajectory spiral out towards the blue uh, circle, which is a limit cycle asymptotically stable for the system. And I just plotted um, uh, this um, sombrero uh, graph of a of just one example, uh, completely op and of function for the system. Um, so what we want to do is we want to generalize that to uh, hybrid systems, and um, there are many definitions of hybrid systems in the literature. Typically these systems, the state space is <clears throat> some disjoint union of manifolds, smooth manifolds with boundary or, or with corners. And um, <clears throat> typically there's some continuous dynamics generated by uh, a vector fields on these manifolds. And then there are also um, closed sets called guards. Uh, often these are um, unions of boundary components of, of, of the manifolds. And then typically there are smooth maps from uh, the guards back into um, uh, your state space. And um, what happens is you flow along, uh, a, uh, along a vector field until you hit a guard, you smack into it, and then you get teleported by um, this reset map back into the system. Um, uh, I'm sure many of you know, all of that smooth data is totally irrelevant uh, for Conley theory, which is the theory of topological dynamics. And so what we've done is we've tried to come up with uh, a class of hybrid systems that um, is one appropriate setting for um, Conley theory. And so for us, state space is just going to be um, a topological space, um, later also mainly a metric space. Um, the continuous time, and that's X, uh, the, um, the continuous time dynamics happen on the flow set F, um, and they are given by a continuous local semi-flow. <clears throat> um, uh, later we'll impose conditions where the only reason it's a local semi-flow is because uh, you flow until you hit the guard and then you can't flow anymore necessarily, or not necessarily. Um, but we're gonna be considering systems with, with forward uh, executions defined for all time. Um, in addition to the flow set and the local semi-flow, you get this closed guard set 
um, and you have a continuous reset map from the guard back into the hybrid system. And if the state space happens to be um, a metric space or an extended metric space, um, we'll call the topological hybrid system a metric hybrid system. Um, now, I think the key idea is just this picture. So um, uh, state space is the entire page, that's X. Um, <coughs> this Z should, be, should say G, um, sorry about that. And so what happens is you start here in, in the flow set and you flow along until you smack into the guard uh, G, at which point the reset map R teleports you over here and you begin flowing again. Um, uh, but actually it can be a little more complicated. Uh, and I see I missed something in the picture. What actually happens is you flow until you hit the guard and then the reset map sends you up here back into the guard, that's allowed to happen. And then the reset map sends you down here and then you start flowing because we're in the flow set. Um, uh, oftentimes in the literature, you'll see um, uh, instead of one state space, one guard, one flow set, you'll see several quote unquote modes where, uh, um, and each mode has got its own flow set and its own guard. Um, and for our purposes, uh, it seems expedient just to take the disjoint union of everything and replace all of the different uh, gadgets within an equivalent gadget, and um, uh, that's what we do. So um, I've just described to you what we call an execution. Um, uh, you can write down in symbols uh, just what I was explaining in words. You, you start in the flow set. If you're in the flow set, you flow to hit the guard. You reset if you're back on the guard. You reset again. If not, you start flowing. That's all this says. Um, and there are, it's the tech, the technical details are just to omit um, some pathologies. I'd like to skip through this. Um, um, now there are two kinds of uh, executions that are particular interest to us and they're related to, they're analogous to, um, we're gonna impose a couple of properties that will uh, make the hybrid system analogous to a semi-flow as opposed to a local semi-flow in the end. <clears throat> and so um, um, the stop time of an execution, executions are what people in hybrid systems tend to call trajectories. I'm not sure why that is, um, but it is what it is. Um, so the stop time is just the largest time uh, in an execution. And um, you can have executions just like uh, integral curves of a vector field, um, it's nice to talk about just segments of an integral, integral curve as an integral curve. You can also talk about maximal integral curves where you flow as long as possible. Same thing for executions. Um, and so if, if for a maximal execution, um, uh, you can, ex you can uh, go for all time. Um, note that when you reset, that doesn't count as any time elapsed. Time only elapses along continuous trajectories. Um, if you can go for an infinite amount of time, we'll call that execution infinite. Um, um, there's something else interesting that happens, which is where you can't go for an infinite amount of time, but you reset infinitely many times. You might go here and then back here and then back here, or you could flow along shorter and shorter segments with resets happening more and more often. Uh, this, this actually happens in a common model of a, just a bouncing rubber ball um, that I'll talk about later. And, um, um, so for executions like that, where infinitely many things happen and infinitely many resets happen in a finite amount of time, we call those Zeno executions. Um, um, uh, and those, are, those two assumptions are gonna be important um, for us. Um, so in particular, I'm gonna assume from now on that all, all maximal executions are infinite or Zeno. Um, and the, I'm gonna assume if the hybrid system is deterministic, this just means that four executions are unique. Um, uh, or actually for us, it's that the flow set is, is disjoint from the guard set, which implies forward uniqueness. And I'm gonna assume state space is compact. Um, and so now um, what you can do is you can start defining things completely analogous to the classical definition. So we can define omega limit sets um, um, other than the complicated looking notation inside, which is just containing the data needed to specify an execution. It's exactly the same as in the classical case. You're just looking at, um, given a set, you're just looking at um, all of the tails of forward executions through that set. Um, 
where the tail is like you look at only times uh, t greater than zero in the future, here both resets and in con continuous time now counts as time elapsed for this uh, omega limits at definition. That's important if we want discrete time dynamical systems to be a special case of our hybrid systems, uh, for example. And you just look at the closures of the tails and then you look at tails further and further away into the future and you take the intersection. Um, and then uh, just like in the classical setting, now that we have omega limit sets, we can say you're an attracting set if you've got <coughs> a forward invariant neighborhood whose omega limit set is um, yourself. And um, I'll just define the basin of such an attracting set to be um, as in the classical case, all points uh, which converge to the um, attracting set. And I'll define this A star to be the complement of the basin. Um, just like, um, or again, generalizing objects from the classical setting, um, you can generalize epsilon T chains. And here some thought is required about how to do this. So let me explain to you in words, the rules for an epsilon T chain. If you start in a flow set, and you flow for at least capital T seconds, then you're allowed to hop epsilon away. So far, no difference from the classical setting. Um, now, if you flow and then you hit a guard, even if only a very small time has elapsed, after you reset, you're immediately allowed to um, uh, do an epsilon hop, just like for a discrete time dynamical system, after you apply the forward iteration map, you're allowed to do an epsilon hop, um, we want our hybrid system to generalize both the straight time and continuous time systems. Uh, now, after I do this hop, um, oh, sorry, I reset here, and then I do an epsilon hop here, and then I apply the reset map. Now, after I apply this reset map, um, I'm immediately allowed to do a hop, like I said. Um, and now there's a, there's a um, special rule we have here. So as soon as you do this continuous time hop, a stopwatch starts ticking and it elapses along this continuous time trajectory. Time does not elapse when I do this, um, but it starts again when I start flowing along in the continuous time world. And as soon as capital T seconds have gone by, I'm allowed to hop again. Um, so this, this allows uh, double jumps happening, but um, this seems like uh, a useful thing to allow. And um, that's it, those are the rules. Um, so once hybrid chains are um, defined, um, everything else just follows the classical definitions. Uh, two points are chain equivalent if and only if for any epsilon, no matter how small, any T, no matter how big, you can epsilon T chain from X to Y and vice versa. Um, and points are chain recurrent, a point X is chain recurrent if it's chain equivalent to itself. Um, if you don't like this um, stopwatch ticking thing happening, I should say later, um, once, I, once we impose a condition that we use, uh, you end up getting the same definitions of chain recurrent set and uh, everything else if you don't allow that. Um, okay, so now what can go wrong? Um, uh, this was a useful example for me to understand. Um, um, well, a lot can go wrong. And um, here are four bad things that can go wrong. Here's almost one of the simplest hybrid systems I can imagine. So on this gray segment, um, you just flow to the right. And then when you smack the gray dot, um, you reset back here. So all the dots are guards and the dotted lines indicate reset maps. Um, and when you're here, you immediately reset over here. Now on this interval, it's not just flow to the right, it's um, flow to the right, but converge to what would be an equilibrium point here um, if, if it weren't for the fact that there's a reset map that immediately teleports you over here. Notice that all of the data defining this hybrid system is completely very, very smooth. Um, um, but there's secretly kind of a discontinuous thing happening, which is the flow here just wants to get closer and closer. But as soon as you um, just move a little bit to the right, the reset map rips you apart from the rest of state space and sends you over here. So for this system, uh, or for this example, you have, unlike the classical setting, these things can't happen. You can have omega limit sets that are not forward invariant. You can have omega limit sets not contained in the chain recurrent set. Um, the chain recurrent set doesn't even have to be forward invariant. 
and it doesn't have to be closed in the state space. Um, so for this example, take this point, it just converges slowly, slowly over here. So it's omega limits at zero. Um, and um, that's not forward invariant because zero gets sent over there. Um, the chain recurrence set for this system is actually just uh, this gray segment, not including the black dot and this gray dot. Um, and uh, so then this black dot, which is omega negative one, not is, it's not in the gray, so it's not in the chain recurrence set. And um, because this, um, uh, okay, so the, yeah, this is in the chain recurrence set here. So when I go here, I, I'm still in the chain recurrence set, all good. Uh, but then I map over here, I'm already not in the chain recurrence set. And then over here, I'm still definitely not in the chain recurrence set. So we lose forward invariance. And because this black dot's not in the chain recurrence set, the chain recurrence set's not closed. So, okay, so we want some kind of regularizing condition to make it so that those things cannot happen because we expect that those things can happen. Uh, extending Conley's theory to the setting seems unlikely. So um, um, we define this thing called the maximum flow time for the local semi-flow, which is just, um, what's the uh, longest amount of time that you can flow um, uh, until you hit the guard? Because we're assuming that all executions are infinite or Zeno, that's the only way that you can leave the domain of the, of the local semi-flow is to hit the guard. Um, so this is just how long do you flow till you smack into the guard? And we say that this hybrid system satisfies what we call the trapping guard condition. If the guard, uh, uh, sorry, this should be G, has, a has some neighborhood U, um, and this should be X, uh, so you have to have a continuous retraction from some neighborhood of the guard onto the guard, which is compatible with the flow. Uh, in the following precise sense, this maximum flow time has to be continuous on this neighborhood of the guard, and if you start in this neighborhood and then you're in the flow set and you just flow along until you can't anymore, um, until you're in the guard G, uh, that's the same as applying this continuous retraction. And you might think that, um, or you might wonder uh, if these assumptions are very restrictive. And, uh, but what we show is that um, there are actually two pretty broad classes of hybrid systems that have, have appeared in the literature. Um, defined in terms of smooth data, um, but uh, they in particular satisfy this condition. Um, uh, and so um, what we do in our uh, paper that's impressed with SIADs is um, we kind of generalize verbatim the two Conley theorems that I uh, showed you earlier. So if you've got a deterministic high metric hybrid system on a compact state space uh, with a trapping guard G, and um, if we had this condition that every maximalist execution is either infinite or Zeno, then Conley's, given, given the previous definitions, um, Conley's decomposition theorem and fundamental theorem hold verbatim. Um, and I need to tell you what a completely Oppeno function is. So um, I'll do that on the next slide. And uh, uh, here are just two pictures um, that I'll, I'll, I'll point to you first. So um, uh, for this system here, um, there's an unstable sink at the origin. You flow outwards if you're nearby it until you smack this blue circle. Once you hit the blue circle, you reset into this annulus. And then there's a limit cycle uh, in the annulus and you just spiral, spiral around. Um, here's, here's an example of one uh, uh, completely up and a function for a system like this. Here's a more physically motivated example. This is actually um, um, some trajectories in the state space of a bouncing uh, rubber ball, say. So, um, uh, if you're on the ground, if you if you just hit the ground, you you bounce upwards. So, y is the vertical velocity of the bouncing ball, and x is its um, uh, vertical position. And uh, so, you bounce upwards, and your uh, vertical position is increasing, increasing. Hits an apex. Now, um, vertical velocity is zero vertical positions at a maximum. Now we start falling towards the ground, velocity is getting more negative. We hit the ground and now we model the ground interaction as um, uh, the velocity discontinuously changes. If there's some dissipation, we lose some energy, but we just keep spiraling around. This is um, an example of a system where executions are not infinite, but they're all Zeno. And I've shown the graph of uh, one completely Oppenov function here. You kind of always fall down the surface 
uh, both along the continuous time and along the discrete time resets. And so those are the conditions we require for a hybrid completely optimal function. If you're in the flow set um, and you flow forwards, you have to immediately decrease the value of your Lyapunov function. On the other hand, if you're in the guard, oh, if you're in the flow set and not chain recurrent, if you're in the guard and not chain recurrent, then resetting has to immediately decrease the value of your Lyapunov function. We also require that uh, the Lyapunov function is able to disambiguate uh, points that are in different chain components. So two points have got to be chain equivalent if and only if they're, uh, they have the same uh, Lyapunov function values. And um, we also require this last technical condition. Um, in fact, our proof actually shows you can take the image of the chain recurrence set to be measure zero, just like in Conley's proof, the, we construct this L uh, with image, the middle thirds Cantor set. Um, okay, so what's the proof idea? Um, well, uh, we take this initial hybrid system. So here's the guard and here's the guard's image and you flow along, you smack the guard, you go over here and you flow along again. Um, now, what we do is we, we first form what we call the relaxed system. So we kind of just take the guard and stretch it vertically upwards or glue a, a cylinder over the guard to the system, the product of the guard with an interval. Um, and that gives us a new hybrid system. So now we go here, but now we, and then we go all the way up. Uh, the reason we do that, um, there are several reasons. One reason is, um, um, is it converts um, Zeno executions into infinite executions um, because now every execution when it hits the guard has got to spend a full second on this cylinder. Then what we do is we take, uh, so the reset map for this system is just the same as this one. And we glue along the reset map back down to the base and we get this last system here. And um, we call this the hybrid suspension. It's not the topologist suspension, but it's the dynamical systems theorist suspension. It generalizes the, uh, the classical suspension of a discrete time dynamical system. And what happens is um, if you impose this trapping guard condition, and this is actually was our motivation, then on this uh, hybrid suspension space, uh, there exists a well-defined semi-flow, which is continuous, and it has the property that executions are in, of the original system are embedded into uh, trajectories of this um, suspension. And in fact, the converse holds too. We show that if you don't have the trapping guard condition satisfied, then you, this can't possibly be continuous. And um, that should actually be pretty intuitive. If you start, if you're a point very near the guard here, and you don't flow immediately forward and smack the guard, say if you go this way or you just hover around, if you just go a, a teeny tiny bit forwards, now that you're on the cylinder, you get shot upwards away. So there's no way the flow could be continuous, the semi-flow could be continuous if you don't have the trapping guard condition. And so the idea is just to apply classical, uh, well, classical Conley theory and uh, along with the actually the generalizations of the classical theory for flows to semi-flows um, to um, the, those uh, results show that Conley's decomposition theorem and fundamental theorem hold on this suspension space. Um, that's a, that's a, uh, um, that's a natural enough idea. Um, uh, but then we, we discovered that some wor more work than we expected is required at the point set level uh, to show that chain equivalence classes up here correspond in a nice way to chain e equivalence classes down there, attractors up here, attracting sets up here correspond to attracting sets down here, and so on. But you can do it. You can you can you can make it all work, and um, this suffices to um, prove those theorems. Um, I just want to mention there's another approach in the literature, um, which is instead of doing the cylinder, forming a cylinder, and then gluing. Um, people just glue directly along, uh, along the reset map. Uh, they just take this G and paste it right here. And um, under some situations, there's uh, a continuous semi-flow down here and people analyze the hybrid system in terms of uh, that system. Um, uh, now, if you want your hybrid system to contain, to, to be generalizations of discrete time systems, you can see immediately there would be a big problem if you did this, because if you just have a discrete time system, you only have a guard, 
and a reset map. You don't have a flow set. It's the empty set. So all of state space is just the guard and you're just getting mapped into the guard. So it's just a discrete time system. And so this space would be, um, you take the state space and every point's forward orbit under the reset map is just becomes a singleton. So every point becomes an equilibrium point uh, or a fixed point. And so every point becomes chain recurrent. And so obviously the chain recurrent set for such a semi-flow where every point stationary has nothing to do with the chain recurrent set of the original system and um, et cetera. Um, so this would not work and that's why we did this. Um, um, and uh, I guess another way to think about this since Yuli talked about homotopy co-limits yesterday is um, this space down here is essentially, uh, it's, it's one specific topological model for the homotopy co-limit of the diagram where uh, uh, there's two arrows. One goes from the guard into state space along the reset. The other goes from the guard into state space along the inclusion map. And uh, this space has been called the homotopy co-limit uh, in the literature by Aaron Ames. Uh, okay, so um, I'm not going to spend very much time on this, but um, I'll just say in words, uh, so if you got a if you got a um, state space which is a smooth manifold with boundary could be a disconnected disconnected manifold um, so you could have many connected components constituting modes um, if your guard is a union of boundary components of the manifold and your uh, flow set is everything that's not in the guard and suppose you've got a a, a, a smooth or locally Lipschitz vector field on the manifold uh, giving you your continuous time dynamics. Um, and the, the reset maps are relevant for what I'm about to say, um, then as long as the uh, vector field points strictly outwards at the, at, the, um, at the guard and strictly inwards at those boundary components not in the guard, or more generally, if it's just non-strictly, uh, um, oh, sorry, I should say inward pointing at the components not in the guard, um, more generally, we don't even need the strictness. So for example, if it's just non-strictly outward pointing um, and, and you assume that maximal integral curves are not defined in forward times, then um, it actually follows, uh, this is not too surprising, that um, this hybrid system satisfies all the conditions for our main theorems, including the trapping guard condition, as long as whatever the reset map is, it's continuous. Um, um, another system, Another class of systems uh, uh, includes things like the bouncing ball. So the bouncing ball example I showed you earlier, um, uh, you can take a big class of mechanical systems which do things like the bouncing ball. There's um, some kind of impact where you smack into the level set of some function and, um, and the guard is when you're hitting that function. Let's size like the height of the bouncing ball. So the guard is, when the bouncing ball is on the ground and heading downwards. Um, and you can just keep generalizing all the things from the bouncing ball. And uh, so there's a class of, a, a broad class of systems, including what in the literature people call Lagrangian hybrid systems that um, are also uh, fall into the purview of our uh, results. Um, uh, I can see that I'm running out of time. So I'm going to race through a lot of this. Uh, on, on this slide, I'm just, uh, Explain. Don't forget, you started. You started ten minutes late. We, we won't punish you for that. Okay. Uh, okay. So when should when should I stop? I think if you stop at uh, one o'clock here, if you could really stop by one o'clock, that'd be perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, so for this bouncing ball, you can um, you can actually directly compute this maximal flow time because this is an integrable. Uh, the continuous time dynamics are integrable and. Um, um, and you can just check that the directly that the trapping guard condition holds independently of the, the general uh, proposition I just showed, implying it holds. And um, although the state space of the system is not compact, energy level sets, uh, sublevel sets are. And um, so the hybrid system restricted to any, any energy sublevel set uh, is well defined, satisfies the hypotheses of our main theorems, which implies. Uh, the existence of uh, the completely up and up function whose graph is shown here, um, it doesn't yield a construction of such a Lee up and up function, just like for the classical theory, um, Conley's uh, fundamental theorem is not constructive. Um, 
if you're not allowed to use the flow, um, if you don't know the flow. Um, but this is this example is simple enough that I could just write it down. And so for this example, the only non-trivial attracting repelling pair is just the origins, the only non-trivial attractor, it's dual repeller is the empty set. The chain recurrent set's just the origin. And so here directly, you can just see that the uh, Conley decomposition theorem holds. This chain recurrent set is the intersection over all attract, uh, attractor repeller pairs, uh, attractor repeller pair unions. It's just equal to zero union the empty set. Um, so Conley's fundamental theorem holds in this case. Um, now a related example, so now I'm going to tell you all the things that are wrong with our, or, uh, which um, which our, our sort of results can't handle. Um, so uh, one blind spot of our theorems, if I just take the previous example and I replace the force of gravity acting on the bouncing ball with a hook spring law, that seems like a pretty mild thing to do. Um, if you compute this maximal flow time, um, now it's discontinuous uh, at the origin um, because every single point always takes the um, on the uh, non on the positive y-axis always takes the same amount of time to get the negative y-axis, and so the the trapping guard condition is not satisfied for this example. So our the the hypotheses of our theorems are not satisfied, but you can just check directly by similar reasoning on the last slide that the conclusions of Conley's fundamental theorem still hold for the system. And so already this blind spot motivates the question, uh, can we do better? Can we relax the trapping guard condition somehow? Um, well, you can't just relax it without replacing it with something else because um, uh, as this example shows, and I'm, I'll have to, I'll try to race through this. Um, uh, here is a metric hybrid system, which looks pretty simple and, um, it satisfies the hypotheses of all of our theorems except for the trapping guard condition. So I've shown in gray the chain recurrent set. Um, what happens for this system, I flow along here and then I converge very, very slowly to the origin, but I never get there. If I'm at the origin, I reset immediately over here. I flow at a constant rate this way until I smack into this guard and then I reset. Um, and if I'm over here, I just flow until the end point and, I, and then I reset over here. Um, so you can uh, prove that for this system without, with only this much work that the, um, uh, there is a chain recurrent set. It's not the whole state space, but there are no non-trivial attracting repelling pairs. And you can also show that no complete Lyapunov function can possibly exist. Because um, if you assume it does, you will get a contradiction. Um, um, so this example violates the conclusions of our results despite satisfying all hypotheses except the trapping guard condition. Um, there's another blind spot of our results, which um, I think would be very important to address. Um, and uh, I'm thanking Eugene Lehrman for drilling this into me and convincing me this is important. Um, so even if you start with very, very smooth data, this is the simplest hybrid system I can imagine that's not trivial. You just flow at a constant rate to the right. When you hit the blue dot, you teleport over here, you reset and you start flowing again. Um, now just consider two of them at once. Um, same thing over, over on the blue side is happening on the green side. Um, now in classical dynamical systems, it would be pretty natural to consider this as a single dynamical system on the product of the two state spaces. Now, if you do that here, what happens is the blue, the green guard uh, turns into this green rectangle together with this red dot. The blue guard turns into this blue rectangle together with its red dot, uh, red dot. And uh, the continuous time flow, since we're going to the right at rate one on both of these, you're just going up at slope one on this uh, square. And um, so you go here, hit the green, you reset according to the green reset, and then you keep flowing. Now we reset according to the blue. But if you notice what happens really, really close to this red dot, uh, this green point really, really close by goes down here. This blue point got really, really close by goes over here. But on the red dot, both resets happen at once. And so you go down here. And so there's this big discontinuity at the reset. Um, um, so the, our, the hypotheses of our theorems are definitely not satisfied. And yet um, the chain recurrent set is, um, uh, it's 
pretty direct to see that it's the entire space because um, all orbits are periodic um, uh, and, and there's a single chain component. Um, and so the conclusions of both Conley theorems hold with the constantly up and up function, but the hypotheses of our theorems don't. And um, so I think examples like this and the previous one suggest that there's a, um, um, a lot of useful work that could be done to extend our, um, our theorems. Um, um, now, um, one of my future goals is, um, is to do uh, what, um, for hybrid systems, uh, what many of the um, talks yesterday discussed, which is I'd like to be able to grid up the state space and um, build, not shown here, um, some kind of uh, directed graph uh, uh, representing a discretization of the dynamics. And um, now one quick observation is that if you do that um, and you just consider say the time tau map of the system, it's gonna be discontinuous because um, you time tau, you go here, here, here. And now if we just started a little bit forward, I would have mapped into the reset or into the guard, which then maps me all the way over here. And so the time tau maps um, not continuous. Um, uh, and so care, some care seems to be required to um, uh, apply uh, some of the exist, existing uh, techniques and use the existing software. And I wonder whether um, grids on the original state space um, could be reasoned about carefully and perhaps related to grids on the hybrid suspension um, in order to apply um, uh, the discretization techniques that we heard about yesterday. Um, you know, and I, I would really love to be able to obtain numerically um, uh, these things for hybrid systems, Morse decompositions, Lyapunov functions, Conley indices, connect connection matrices, and so forth. And if we could do this, we could, I think we could rigorously, just like in the classical setting, um, for the first time, prove uh, existence of things like um, uh, periodic orbits, um, uh, heteroclinic orbits, chaos, and so on for robotic systems and other autonomous systems for which hybrid systems are um, useful models. Um, and we could do this numerically. I think that would be great. Um, um, uh, okay, but wait, um, one thing I wanna tell you about is I just talked about computing the Conley index for a hybrid system, but what does that even mean? Um, nobody's defined a Conley index for hybrid systems. And so something that uh, I'm working on in collaboration with Zoe Cooperband and Paul Gustafson. Um, uh, Zoe is a PhD student in um, Rob Grice's group uh, at Penn, and you'll hear from Paul later today. Um, so what we're currently trying to do is, um, so you know, uh, many of you know, Rybakowski generalized the Conley index theory to semi-flows. And so what, um, a, a natural idea and what we're currently trying to do is um, just define the Conley index of an isolated invariant set for uh, uh, a topological hybrid system to be that of the corresponding isolated invariant set for the suspension semi-flow. And um, uh, what seems uh, plot, what seems uh, like it shouldn't be too much trouble is to use the Rybakowski uh, theory to, to prove existence of index pairs, used to compute the index, um, show that in, the index is independent of the index pairs so that the index is well-defined actually an index of an invariant set as opposed to an index of an index as of an index pair and, and so forth. Um, some current difficulties though, unlike the classical setting, um, uh, when you want to establish continuation invariance um, of the index, you want to show it doesn't change when you do small deformations or even large deformations satisfying some conditions uh, of the reset map and of the local semi-flow something happens that doesn't happen in the, in the classical setting. When you deform the reset map, the very space, the state space carrying the suspension semiflow changes because this is, that space is defined as, as a quotient along the reset map of, a, of an associated space. So if you change the reset map, the space changes. And it's not only that the space changes, the homeomorphism type of the space can uh, discontinuously bifurcate. Um, 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 and so you can't just directly apply the Rybakowski continuation and variance result on the suspension state space because the Rybakowski's result or continuation and variance is for a single state space. Um, um, so this is work in progress. And so um, we haven't proved this yet, but um, we have an idea. So um, the idea is to first um, 
just like in the classical theory, which uh, contains lots of proofs of existence of special types of index pairs, uh, we want to do the same thing and we want to construct an index pair which uh, remains such under small per deformations of the reset map. And then if you, you can do that, and if you have a, homo uh, a, a nice homotopy of the reset and the uh, local semiflow, you can lift it to a two parameter deformation whose domain is say this square, the blue diagonal corresponds to the original homotopy and you can approx approximate the blue diagonal with this uh, stair step homotopy. And on the horizontal segments, only the reset changes. So because our index pairs are stable under C0 small deformations, you can just take the quotient of the same index pair to define the index. And okay, so along horizontal segments, index is continuation invariance, invariant. Along vertical segments, the suspension semiflow state space doesn't change. So the Ribikowski theory implies continuation invariance in vertical segments. And you do this all the way. And when you get to the end, you get continuation invariance of the index, we hope. Uh, it seems what we have to do is prove the existence of these uh, nice index pairs for hybrid systems. Um, the last thing I want to say is that um, you, it seems like you definitely also need something like the trapping guard or some replacement for the Conley index. So uh, here's a perfectly good index pair for this system going from the green to the red. In the suspension, we had to imagine the blue arrows part of state space. Here is also a perfectly good index pair going from the red to the red. I'm using red to denote exit sets. Here, the green's not an exit set because the blue takes you immediately into this, um, in, into this uh, uh, neighborhood. And if you compute the index over here, uh, the homotopy index, um, you, you do this uh, line segment, collapse the red to a point. Okay, that's just collapse only itself to a point. This is, point, this is homotopy equivalent uh, in the sense of pointed spaces to just a point. Whereas over here, when you collapse both reds to a point, you get this pointed circle. Um, and these are not the same space. So uh, you need, it seems like you need the trapping guard condition for uh, well-definedness of the index, uh, independence of the index pair. Um, so uh, that's it. So I've, as I said, I'd like to develop the Conley index theory for hybrid systems. I would really like to develop um, uh, either myself or others, I would like to see rigorous numerics for, uh, and, uh, for a Conley theoretic study of hybrid systems, but we need help. Um, um, and um, it would be interesting to see if we could generalize or weaken the trapping guard condition and allow discontinuous resets. And there's also the, also the question of non-compact state spaces and uh, deterministic systems. Uh, so with that, I'll um, stop and um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Um, questions? I have a question. Uh, oh, oh, Dan, Dan has a question. No, no, go ahead, Who, whoever that was. Uh, that was Yuli. Uh, applause. That was okay. applause, Yuli. That wasn't a question from Garalnik. That was applause. OK, so, uh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I have this uh, dreaded. Uh, not so much question, but a remark. <laughs> so just harking back to uh, what, what I was saying. So like your, um, you know, your sort of this uh, example of bad, uh, bad guard, which you're approaching but never jump, and from this guard, you know, this is exactly what should be captured by the uh, sort of my theory. When you look at, when, you know, if your topology is induced by the trajectories, then those trajectories are never closed. You know, you can approach this guard or you can jump from the guard. Those, you know, you never have trajectories which are hover next to each other for a long time. So it means this topology you induced where this guard is actually, is, has in its vicinity those approaching trajectory, it's a fake topology. It's like mainstream topology. It doesn't exist anymore, you know? You know the, the guard is separated. It's like, you know, like it's non Hausdorff in, in, in this topology induced by trajectories, this guard is, out there, you know, it's not close to those uh, points approaching it. And exactly the same way the Eugen's uh, Lerman example, when you have this torus disguised as this like two guards, the topology of the torus will be recovered if you pay attention to which, which trajectories are close to each other in time. 
So you like this fake discontinuity will disappear just because this, you know, like it doesn't matter, you know, like you have this one guy jumping first, another guy jumping first, and they're closed after that, you know? So means they should be closed. It means it's not a discontinuous point. It was fake puncture. So like <laughs> But Uni, what about the corner? What about the corner case? You, what, what are we gonna do with the corner case? You need that for a theory. You don't see that physically, but don't you need that for a theory? What 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 case I missed it then? The, the corner, the quote unquote corner case, right? Which 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 goes completely elsewhere. So what do you mean? Corner case, you know, like again, you mean Eugene's example? Yeah, yeah. The corner case, exactly. So like if you take two trajectories approaching this corner from two sides, they jump, you know, some ways, but you know, after that, after jumps, after short disturbance, they still going close to each other. You know, you jump first and then jump second, and they go close to each other means they're close. So the fact that you were you were like jumping in different places is fake. You have to introduce a new topology, which will be a topology of the torus rather than a topology I'm, of the square. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. But I, I have many questions back for you, Yuni. But I'm going to let Matt. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry about uh, my remark. Well, <laughs> I, nice no, I, 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 I think that's interesting, and um, I've been puzzled by this by Eugene's example for a while, and so I'd like to talk about it. Um, the uh, the only thing I would like to counter with is. Um, if if your hybrid system if your hybrid system is coming from some real physical system, uh -huh. they're they're um, we're in, coming from the real world and we can measure distances in the real world. Um, I think this induced this um, new topology that you're talking about that you say should be um, more correct in some sense. It might be at odds with the topology um, forced upon us by the physical world. I think. But you know, like again, topology forced that like nothing is forced. It's you know, you're given a description of your system and description is wrong, you know. That the fact that you know you you know, like <laughs> I have New York time uh, sorry, New New York zip uh, New York area code on my phone, I live in Urbana, you know, yeah, there's continuity. <laughs> it's just wrong description. You know, my phone does not tell my geographic position. You know, my geographic position tells where I am. You're given the wrong description. You have to recover the right one. That's my point. You know, the fact how the system is described to you is completely material. I mean, it's material. It defines how the system evolves. However, the topology, you have to recover it. And recovering topology is, you know, by looking at trajectories, by observing them from the data, not from the external, you know, description, which is, you know, pushed you know, upon you by some, uh, you know, RFC or whatnot. But if I had two things in the real world that are very close, like my two fingertips here, um, I don't, I'm not sure that I uh, feel totally sanguine about having a model of the dynamics of these things in which my fingers are actually super far apart. I, I don't. Well, I mean, if you if you never observed, if you start a different, you know, you start at one point and start another point, and you never observe them following one another, means the fact that they look close to you is fake. You know, like it's a different topology. You know, again, you can have different topologies, right? So it's like you, you know, your area code topology is one, and your way, like you drive to 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 for shopping is another one. So, like, if you have AT and T, then you know, yeah, you care about his area code topology. If you are whatever, want to look where you spend your money, it's you know your real world topology. You know, make your choices. If you are interested in how the system evolves, of course you have to pay attention to trajectories, not the description of the points. Description of the points, the tags you put on them, are meaningless unless they describe it. You know, your trajectories unless they describe how you behave. Okay, it's like mixture of philosophical and mathematical like uh, problems, but it is there. <laughs> I would like to talk more about this sometime. Um, I, I mean, I I need to think about it. I, I think, um, but yeah, thanks. That that's um, that's a really interesting um, comment. So so I have a question. Uh, you you assume some niceness and properties uh, with the hybrid system. I, I'm assuming uh, you are assuming smooth like a C1 vector fields for each uh, uh, discrete state. Like if you're at Q equals one, you have a, some C1 vector field, Q equals two is a different C1 vector field. And you have resets that get, you know, jump into those, these vector fields. Um, there, is, there is notions of hybrid systems that have non-uniqueness, 
right? At each point, you could have five different trajectories, let's say. <clears throat> and depending on where you start, you know, uh, you know, where you start, you take a different solution as you pass to that point. Um, so they, they have, they have the, the way they measure distance, there's multiple notions of distance. It's not necessarily distance in the, the topological space where trajectories lie. Uh, they, have, they have some kind of tube-based distance where they allow one trajectory, uh, you know, to have the same point as the other trajectory, but these tubes that are following through that same point are away from each other. You know what I mean? So, so basically what I'm it's really- It's like a score hood metric, right? I, it's I like what, sorry? I, I think I, I I think I know one paper that, like that where they talk about a a, a score a score code metric on um I think it's what what you're saying like epsilon like, t it's like the epsilon t metric epsilon tau metrics uh on in Ricardo Sanfeliz Gobel and uh, Teal's book the original uh, hyperdynamical systems book they have this epsilon epsilon tau distance that they defined um oh, I, yeah. I didn't I didn't know about this I gotta say something about that a little bit later. Yeah, it, it's basically how you could track, how you have a consistent idea of distance when you have non-uniqueness and trajectories. And, 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 and that does show up because what ends up happening is, is it really depends on how you get to that point, right? And you get, you, you'll have multiple arcs essentially associated with, with it, right? So, so yeah, it's, it's in, uh, it's in uh, uh, Teal, uh, San Felice, and Gobel's book. And, and Dan knows about it, <laughs> obviously. Thanks for pointing that out. I, I... An epsilon t distance. Sounds I'm like epsilon tau. I left epsilon the book tau. in my office, so I can't look it up right now. I'm not home. That, that sounds I, like tau distance. That sounds like something I should know about. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Good talk, by the way. Oh, thanks a lot. So, Matt, uh, yeah, good talk as well. Uh, I I just so so the notion. Sorry. So for hybrid differential inclusions, the so, the so-called Sunfelicia Teal framework, uh, there it, its results it, its result results hinge on uh, a way of metrizing the space of executions that is extremely restrictive and creates essentially the same effects that Yuli was talking about, where. Um, you declare, you end up declaring very, you end up declaring closed trajectories very far away from each other simply because they are not exactly synchronized in the way they hit the guard. And so that framework, I wanted to say just that that framework, which is a very, which is now being very extensively used, at least by the controls community, um, that framework seems to suffer from a, a similar flavor, though perhaps a slightly different set of inconsistencies with the reality you want to describe. So I think that, uh, I, I think that studying, comparing the two frameworks and trying to bring them to a common denominator, which is a goal of mine, is, is, is a thing that, is a thing to do, definitely a thing to do. And I, I like your approach, uh, but here is a question then. Seem, it seems like most of the problems arise from choices of metrics. At least in the compact setting, at least in the compact Hausler setting, you can, you can work with a canonical uniformity. That actually also gets you closer to questions about self-intersections and things like that, because canonical uniformity just lives in the in the square and talks about the diagonal. Is there a way to, I think there should be a way to formulate your results in terms of uniformities and perhaps getting a little bit more insight from a weaker framework. Um, is, I'm not sure that I know what the canonical uniformity is. This is a kind of uniform structure. Yes, so for so uh, it's a standard result about uniform structures that rate right, that the compact Hausdorff space uh, has um, has a uniformity that allows you to recover recover its topology, and this uniformity, the maximally such uniformity is uniquely determined. Yada yada yada. Um, I should say that. Um... We're pretty sure that just like in, in Conley's book, um, 
the Conley decomposition theorem actually doesn't even need a metric. Um, it holds in the setting of compact Hausdorff spaces. And we're pretty Ooh, sure yeah. we, we didn't go there just because um, we were lazy. Um, we're pretty sure the Conley decomposition theorem probably holds in that setting for hybrid spaces. So no metric, um, compact Hausdorff state space. I, I think that would be interesting to investigate. Um, I'm not so sure about the, um, the fundamental theorem, although like the construction of the, the Lyapunov functions, although to me, I, um, I don't think that it's on a compact state space, I don't think it's sensitive to the particular choice of metric. I think any metric compatible with the, um, uh, with the topology of the state space um, should be fine because um, uh, I think the Conley relation and the chain equivalence classes and the chain recurrence set on the compact state space, they don't depend on the choice of metric. Um, but as far as the, the examples that, um, uh, Eugene's example that Yuli was just discussing with the square, I'm, um, I'm confused about how um, uh, using this canonical uniformity could resolve uh, the discontinuity there. I'd like to talk to you more about that. And I also, one question I have is, um, um, in this trajectory metric used by the San um, San Felice and Kiel, is is that a metric just on trajectories, or can it also be? Can I also extract a, a metric on the state space itself? Can I measure the distance between pairs of points using? Um, oh, oh, they 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 start at the in a much stronger position than than you do. They have. Um, they have their flow set embedded in RN. They have their jump set embedded in RN. The yep. metric is always inherited from RN. Mm -hmm. As a result, there are many, many bad things that, ha that might happen just because you embedded your flow sets, your flow set in RN in some weird way. Um, yeah, they, they adopt RN's metric to, you, to construct this tau epsilon idea. Uh, yeah, and it's a really bad idea. I mean, it's, it's very clear that they've constructed the topology, the metric on their space of executions, essentially in the strongest way possible, so the biggest value possible, so to speak, to guarantee certain results um, using standard, standard artel ascoli arguments. So that it's, it's not like, it, it's not as if they were, they, they have looked for you know, the right notion. They just looked for what makes the standard arguments work. And so there is a lot of room there, I think, to, uh, to solve robustness problems for hybrid systems. On one hand, that's what they're interested in. And to, to possibly find, find a way out of your uh, predicaments. Thanks a lot for, for the suggestion. I'm, um, I'm definitely going to look into that. I, I really need to figure out what this tau epsilon distances. Oh, yeah, that's easy. Uh, it will take you five minutes. Uh, OK, I think we need to get on with the next talk. Uh, Matthew, I'd like to follow up with you on the, the Conley index things. Um, I'm, I, I don't claim to, uh, I'm not going to claim that I understand what the technical challenges are. But um, you know, Ribikovsky's theory, really what Ribikovsky did was not so much a semi-flow as the non-compact. Non non-compactness and the the semi-flow is that you don't really need in Conley stuff ever to go backwards so uh, that I would start with Salomon's paper on the on in the transactions as as a place to look for the index but we should talk about it so at least I can understand what the subtleties are yeah thanks a lot Sal Salomon does semi-flows if you look at it he doesn't ever have to back up so oh okay yeah uh, right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I, I'd love to talk about this. Okay. Um, yes. So let's give ourselves a three-minute break, uh, and then we'll we'll start with Everton. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>